Exercise 8. In this video, we're going to look at the capabilities in SOLIDWORKS for lofting. Basically, what lofting is, is taking multiple sections and uh, drawing them in onto multiple sketch planes, and then you can actually create a loft between those sections. Uh, you could have an infinite amount of cross sections to loft between, and you could also use guide curves. In this exercise, we're just going to use strictly uh, profiles or sections. We're not going to go into guide curves. That's covered in the advanced class. So today, our lesson, we're going to design a boat hull. In this case, you could see a picture of a boat here. We're going to create this. The first thing it tells us to do on the in the manual is we're going to create four planes beginning from the front. So we're going to, uh, we actually are truly going to create three planes here, but we're going to use the front plane. So that's a little um, misleading there in creating four planes. We're actually creating three. We're going to select the front plane. We're going to offset it by six inches. We're going to create a, a new plane called plane one. That's the offset plane. And then we're going to offset a plane off of plane one, which will be called plane two, and that will be offset eight inches from plane one. And then finally, we'll create a plane three that's offset only one inch away from plane two. So let's take a look at this. So to begin with, we go to File, New, Part File. Make sure that you're set up in the ANSI inch units. We'll start off by selecting the front plane. And if we want to see it constantly, we could, when we select it with the left mouse button, you'll see a little set of eyeglasses. That's show. Just select that. And now if I click off of it, we could still see it. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit, select the front plane, and now here's the trick for moving it. Hold the control key down through this whole process. Grab the thin blue line. It might be green on your computer, but uh, in mine it's set to blue. I'm going to grab the thin line. Do not grab these handles, those little balls. Stay away from those, but let's go ahead and grab the line with the left mouse button depressed. Hold the left mouse button, and you're continuing to hold the control key. Once you see a preview, and over to the left, you'll see the plane wizard appear. That gives you some feedback as to how far you're dragging it. You can release the control key. And now you could release the left mouse button. And on the left side here, we have a distance offset that we could type in. In this case, the first one is going to be an offset of six inches. So type in the value of six inches and hit the green check mark to apply. And that should automatically name it plane one. Now, if you did it incorrectly, you could always go back and change it by double clicking on that plane again. And you'll see the actual distance measurement, in this case, six inches appear. If it's a different value than six inches, you just double click on it and type in a new value and hit apply. Anyway, let's go back. Let's hold control now, grab plane one with the left mouse button, drag it forward a little bit, release the control key, and now we could type in eight for this offset and hit the green check mark. And for the last, we hold control, grab the thin line of plane two, drag it forward, and type in one inch. This is gonna be the tip of our boat. Now we can begin by selecting the front plane and starting our sketch and drawing the profile that's shown in the manual. And if we look at the manual here, you can see here's an image of it. Here's the origin in the center. There's a, a horizontal line going across. It's about two and a half inches and a vertical line that's two inches. Now in between here, we have a curve and this curve is called the spline that we're gonna use. Splines are interesting. They're polynomial splines. Uh, or NURBS actually now in the latest version of SOLIDWORKS, which is a subset of a polynomial spline, which you might remember from algebra courses. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and generate this spline. But first of all, let's go ahead and draw those lines. Take the line tool, line up at the origin, draw out a horizontal line approximately two and a half inches long. Then, go ahead and up to the origin again, drag a vertical line approximately two inches in length. Now we could go and select the spline tool up here at the top. Select the spline tool and if you looked at the, 
drawing carefully, you'll see that there's actually a total of four points that make up the spline. Two of them are on the ends, and then two of them are in the middle. So we start the first one right here, click and drag, locate the second point that you'd like to drop. It could be pretty much anywhere. Release it. Go back to that point where you just dropped it, click again, and drag out another spline. You can see how it's adaptive. This is a spline, a polynomial spline that we're seeing in action. Release it, click again, and continue on until you get to the vertex of the vertical line. Snap to it, release it, and then hit escape on your keyboard when you're done. Now you could add the dimensions. Go to smart dimension, add the 2.5 inch dimension at the top, and the vertical line will be dimensioned at 2 inches. Now to verify the other dimensions, we just look at this. In this case, the vertical dimensions are going to be 1.5 and 1.25. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and select this top line, select this point, and this is going to be 1.25. And let me actually verify that again and 1.5 so this one from here to here will be 1.5 okay now what we could do is add the horizontal dimensions so from this line to this point click and drop the dimension and if we take a look at the manual, that's going to be 0.5 and then 1.5. So then this point to this line will be 1.5. Now, at this point, it's not a bad idea to hit the escape key and lay out your dimensions as you would normally want to see them on a drawing. In this case, I'm going to lay them out in this direction uh, so they're easily accessible because we're going to use them again in just a few min another minute. All right, you can see that the sketch is fully defined. We're ready to move on to the next one. So let's hit the rebuild button up at the very top to exit the sketch. Once you're exited, it should turn gray. If you need to enter it for some reason, click on it and you'll see the option edit sketch will brings you right back in. But rebuild will exit you out of the sketch. So let's rotate our view a little bit. We could see that we need to put uh, two more of these very similar on plane one and plane two. Plane three is just going to be a single point for the tip of the bow. Now rather than resketching this, let's see a shortcut. A shortcut for taking this geometry and copying it to other planes is simply a matter of selecting it, not from here, not in the view screen, but from the feature tree. So we see sketch one listed in the feature tree. Select it just with one click. Then you could right mouse, uh, actually with one click you could hold control and hit C for copy. Otherwise you could go up to the top and you'll find under edit you'll find copy as well. Now select plane one in the view screen and hit control V as in Victor and that will paste your sketch on there. Now let's go ahead and edit that. It's just a simple matter of just double clicking on the geometry uh, or click on it and then go to edit sketch. Now what you might notice right away it's under define but all the dimensions are there. What happens is that because we put it on a new plane it, no lo it lost the coincident relationship to the origin so it's just a matter of us dragging it away, drag it a far distance away and drag it back with the left mouse button depressed. Okay, and basically you lock it back in. Now that you have it locked in, we could go back to the training manual and look at the next page. And for the sketch that's going to be on plane one, we have to change the values. So, for example, here we have this is actually get larger. So, for the vertical dimensions, we have 2.375, 1.75. So we just double click on this, the dimension and we go ahead and change it. Change the largest ones first if you're making it larger and move your way down to the small ones and vice versa for going from a, 
a, a larger to a smaller. And then change the bottom dimensions as well. And hit rebuild when you're ready. Now you could select plane 2 and we should still have it in the memory buffer, the uh, what we copied and pasted. So if we hit control V again, we should be able to see it up here. And so now we could click on that and edit the sketch. Again, grab the corner with the left mouse button, drag it far away, and drag it back to snap it in to become fully defined. Now in this case, we have to make these dimensions smaller, so we start from the small ones and work our way into it. So this one will be 2.2. .2. This will be 0.375. And this one will be 0.6. As we are nearing the tip of the boat, of course, it's getting smaller. This one will be 0.2. This one will be 0.5. And 0.675. Again, we hit rebuild. Now we just need to make the uh, point on plane 3. So we select plane 3, start our sketch, and we'll use the point tool. We've never used this before, but it's this little dot that's up here. It just sketches a point, and we want to drop that right on the origin. So we click to drop it, hit the green check marker, and hit rebuild. Now we're ready to create our loft. So after you hit rebuild, go to the features tab and we're going to go ahead and find loft boss base. All we're adding here are profiles. And what you want to do is select them in sequence from uh, back to front or front to back and also select them in a corner relative to one another. So in this case, I'll select near this corner to start the one in the rear and then this corner on the left and then try and grab this corner on the left. If you don't do this, if you don't observe these rules, what could happen is let me clear the selection. I'll show you. If I selected this corner on the top right and then selected this corner on the left, we see it starts to twist and does some unusual things. So you definitely want to, um, in that case, actually, I selected a point, but it will start to twist. Let me try it here and here. There. So that's why you should select them and the proper coordinates. So at the corners here is fine. And then select the point. Now what happens here is that we see it looked like it actually is pushed in in the nose. This is a start and end constraint that needs to be adjusted. If you hit the little arrows to the right of start and end constraint on the left side of the screen, you'll see the start constraint and end constraint. In this case, we're concerned with the end constraint most of all. What it is, it's added weight to this uh, using the default. We actually want to select none. And we could actually do the same with the star constraint, although that's not as critical. And you will see it will straighten itself out. So none and none for the start and end constraints. Hit the apply, and you have half of your boat hull finished. At this point, we could actually hide the planes. To hide the planes, we can just go to View up at the very top and deselect planes. The next step is to mirror, and we're going to mirror the whole body over. So we could select this face on the side, go to the mirror tool, and you could do features or body to mirror. If you have more detailed features on here, you might want to use the body to mirror. That mirrors everything, or features will work on this one since it's only one single feature. But just to be on the safe side, let's just use bodies to mirror and hit the green check mark after you select the body. And now you have the bullet hole finished. Now at this point, 
this is as far as the lesson goes in the manual. This is all you need to do in order to get graded on the project. Uh, we do have a boat contest usually and that is basically where you would design a, a boat over the top surface of this or use this to design a boat. You can see in class there are several examples of Spanish galleons, we have aircraft carriers, titanics, and uh, sailboats, rowboats, canoes, and kayaks. So uh, feel free to work on that on your own. I'll get started really quick just showing you a little some what you might want to do to get it started. You could select this top surface if you wanted, start a sketch on it. We could use the offset entities to offset some geometry. I'm going to hit the reverse button here and hit the green check mark. I'm going to take the line tool and draw it across here and then use the trim tool to trim away the excess lines here and here. Now I'm going to go to features and extrude boss. I'm going to extrude it up a little bit and we're going to add some draft over here on the left turn on the draft to give it more of an angled shape. Hit the green check mark to apply. Now if we wanted to put a, a say, make this a sailboat, we can put the mast up here. We can select this face, start a sketch, draw a circle, and we'll center it here. And by no means am I a designer of boats, but this is just for fun. Go to Features, and we could extrude that up. And we could add draft on it as well. Probably one degree would work well enough. And hit the Apply. A little thick there. But then we could select the right plane and start a sketch. And we'll go normal too. And I'm just going to take the line tool and draw a little detail here. Put a little draft on it. And then we could revolve that. Go to features, revolve boss space, select that line in there as your axis of revolution and apply. Now to add a sail we could select the right plane start our sketch. We'll go normal 2 again and use the spline tool and we could take what we've learned from last week's lesson and draw a preview of what our sail would look like. Here I'm going to draw just a little curve like that hit the rebuild button. Now I'm going to select the front plane and start a sketch and we'll go normal 2 again and then I'll put a little wind in those sails like over here I'll just draw the front and connect those dots and hit rebuild. As you can see they're on separate planes but we could use our trick from last week where we combine the two curves to make a single three-dimensional guide curve. So now we could go to Insert, Curve, Projected. Select the two curves. And you can see the preview it's given us right here. And we have a three-dimensional guide curve for use for our sail. And then I'm going to select the right plane again and start a sketch. We'll go Normal 2. And again, we'll use the spline tool and we'll draw another portion of the sail. Hit rebuild. And now we can loft between those. Here I'll show you a little trick using what they call surface loft. If you right click on any of these icons, bring up the surfacing or surfaces toolbar, you'll find a lofted surface. If you select lofted surface, you could actually loft between these two. And there we could see it's creating our sail. That start and end constraint gives you options for um, applying additional weight to the object.
this case, uh, I didn't want direction vector. Just go normal to profile, and we could get it making look a little bit like it has more wind in it, and apply. And there is our sail. And that concludes this lesson.